Hello, in this short video I'm going to show you how we uh, are preparing and assembling the main computer for the UGPRV. Now the UGPRV is a little plane that me and a friend or two are working on and it stands for Unmanned General Purpose Reconnaissance Vehicle. Now it's a rather long name but it's all we could think of at the time and it's basically a an FPV plane if you like, um, so like a hobbyist sort of thing, except unlike a usual RC plane as uses computers. So there we have the Arduino Uno Revision 3, uh, which is made in Italy. And that AVR controller right there will be using its PWM capabilities to control our servos. And then we've got our Model B Raspberry Pi with 512 megabytes of RAM, and that does all the math and everything else on board. Now, the Model A is better for flight because it doesn't have the bulky connectors like this one. So the two boards will communicate using I squared C or I2C, uh, which is inter interconnected devices. Now the Raspberry Pi will send data to the Arduino down the I2C line and back again. So that's basically how they'll communicate to control the flight surfaces. So sorry for the fact that this is dubbed over. I did forget to record the audio while I was doing the video. So here's a voiceover for you. So we've got our two boards. Now, for the actual control of devices, we'll be using the Arduino, uh, which I have a shield for, and you'll see that in a minute. But here is the logic level converter that we'll be using to convert between the 5 volt logic levels on the Arduino and the 3.3 3 .3 volt logic levels on the Raspberry Pi. Now, you're not going to want to connect them directly because you will fry your Pi, or, so to speak, or at least do some damage to it. So as you can see here, I've got the board from Sparkfun. It is a logic level converter, and I've soldered uh, some right angle header pins to it. Now, you wouldn't normally get these with it, so you're going to have to order them separately, and the six on each side, so 12 pins. It's a dual channel device, and we're only using the transmit lines because they're bi-directional, whereas the receive lines are single directional and we can only use the bi-directional capabilities for our project. So we're connecting the Raspberry Pi to the Arduino. I've just set that backwards to how I've done it in the video. So that's our little logic level converter to translate the voltages and logic levels. Now, no power is actually passed through for powering the devices themselves. Simply just the logic levels and ground are passed through. So we're going to come up with a solution later in the video for actually powering the two devices from one source. So here's our Tinkerkit sensor shield. Now, this is for the Arduino, and it's a shield or a snap on board, as I like to think of them, which allows us to connect up to uh, six uh, outputs and six inputs easily. And it's also got a serial and TWI or two wire interface, which allow us to connect things. So this is how they go together. Simply slot in and they'll only go one way. So don't force them if they're not going. And the little holes and notches and stuff will all line up nicely. So there you go. And as you can see on the side, I've put a little bit of insulation on them wires. That's our uh, SDA and SCL or clock and data lines. Uh, that's just to prevent any uh, interference. And that's our VE in line, which can carry quite a bit of voltage when we're doing some tests. So I've put that over there just to prevent any shorts that would fry anything. So there we go. That's just rubber insulation off some old wires that weren't needed. Now I've just slipped over the pins before fitting. So DC input jack, you can put, you're meant to put 7 to 12 volts in there, and that is then voltage regulated to 5 volts. But you can actually access that through the VIN pin, or VIN, which is the one I've got the white insulation on there. Don't worry though, the USB port is protected, so if you put 7 volts in the DC jack, you won't get 7 volts out of the USB port. Um, that's separate. So these orange pins that you see me pointing to now are the output pins. And them are for PWM controlled devices such as servos or in our case servos and the ESC. And that there, four pin interface on the left of your screens at the bottom, that I pointed to just a second ago, is the two wire interface. And the pins on the side that I'm pointing to are the connections. So you've got the 5 volt, ground, SDA and SCL. Uh, and the, the power for that actually comes through the, the little buffer cap that's on there because of the servos and stuff drawing extra current. So that's how we actually connect the other devices of the plane, the control surfaces, to the, the board. 
Now, as you can see here, there is a rather large standing electrolytic capacitor on this board, or sorry, surface mount capacitor, um, which is rather easy to break off. Now, you can resolder a new one, but that would be a little bit tricky uh, if you break it off. Um, so try and avoid that if you can. They are delicate little components. I mean, that would stand a bit of force, but you don't want to do it. Uh, later, we're going to fit a two-color LED. This one does like a, an orangey red and green. So we'll be fitting that to the Arduino, and the program code will change it from orange to green once the program is fully running. And as you can see, I've put three wires on it here. Black for ground, yellow for the yellow side, and green for the green side, and that's the ground in the middle there. So I'll hook that up after I've connected the I2C lines to the to the digital pins on the right hand side from this view, the right hand side of the Arduino, or the top of it. So anyway, let's go ahead and prepare to fit our I2C lines. So I'll be using the following jumper cables for this. You'll see them in just a second close up. And here they are. So this is a range of jumper leads that I've got. Some are male-ended and some are female. Now I've got female to female and female to male here. Now I'm using the males to go into the side headers of the Arduino and the females come for everything else. So the two-wire, the I2C logic level converter and the GPIO pins. So here's a time-lapse of me fitting them now. So as you can see, I'm using different colours for different things. We've got our clock and data lines in green and yellow, uh, our 5 volt DC in red, and our ground in black. Now, I later changed the line on the left, which is red, to a blue for 3 volt, 3.3 volt. So, as I thought, it would be best to change the colour between the two so that we know the difference on each side. Now remember, as I said, power doesn't get passed through this board, just the logic logic power and ground. So this won't actually be able to power our Raspberry Pi. So here I am now connecting it up on the Raspberry Pi side. As you can see, I've connected it to the two-wire interface on the Arduino and the pins on the GPIO header off the board are now done on the Raspberry Pi side. So there's the logic level converter all connected up and the Pi which is great. So that's that bit done. I'm just showing you here where they all go. Yeah, it was much better with the original audio. I do apologize for this. So as I'm just explaining here, that there's two little FETs on there and a couple of resistors that just basically switch the voltage and use the the <laughs> Pretty much use the logic signals on the one side as the gate signal for the other side and the 3 volt as the input and it uses the, the, the FET to, to switch that I believe. So that's a completed I2C setup and we're going to go ahead now and connect the cross power lines to be able to power the one board off the other. So I've just shown you the pins there that we'll be using. It's the 5 volt 3v3 and ground from the Arduino. Uh, and we're going to use the same colour scheme again. Oh, I hooked that up wrong. Same colour scheme again to power one board from the other. Now, this is a bi directional power system. There's no sort of diodes or anything like that. So, if you power the Raspberry Pi, the Arduino will also be powered. Or if you power the Arduino, the Pi will be powered. Now, you don't really have to worry about current too much because the Pi's maximum current rating for this model is 700 milliamps. Now, I've run a quick test with my multimeter and it only really uses about about 400 milliamps, and that's running with the desktop environment and everything uh, all going. Uh, keyboard and mouse plugged in, and we won't even be using that much stuff on board. So was, that's pretty much that set up. Now you can strap them wires if you want, or put some sort of um, some sort of wrap around them to neaten them up. Now I'm just going to fit the LED, and this is really quick. Now I've got them all on GPIO pins, so there it is, green to say the system's powered on. Now in between that bit, I did plug a USB lead in there. And as you can see, the Pi powered on as well as the Arduino. Now orange means it's in the setup section of the code and green means it's in the loop. So thanks very much for watching. As you can see, there's a working uh, I2C setup. 
I'm Daniel Wilson and the project's UGPLV. Be sure to look it up. Uh, There's more information on my blog. Goodbye.